Hey guys, Jano Zero. Well, it is kind of chilly. It is kind of gray, kind of drizzly, kind of damp today. So, perfect day to cook off grid. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to, I'll just show you guys a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, in this kind of weather, cooking off the grid. Now, I have some dried grass that I had in the shed that I that I pick every, whenever I can a chance. You come across some dry grass, grab it up because it's great tender. Or if you find some, see how this stuff here is kind of like laying over and it's folded over. Uh, underneath that stuff is usually some pretty dry grass that you can use uh, for your tender. And uh, that's what I've done. And then I'm also going to show you the uh, how I use my, uh, my stove tech. I've got a two-door stove tech that was given to me as a gift back in the summer by, uh, I think, Sheila. Uh, and I want to show you how I mainly use my stove tech as a burner. I've got a big pot of taters right here that uh, we're going to cook up for some mashed potatoes and we're going to cook some pork chops on the big fire there and I uh, just wanted to let everybody know this is how I, I do it even when it's crappy weather like it is right now uh, if we were on our own uh, in an on our own situation uh, you know you still would need to eat every day and uh, this is a perfect day to practice uh, cooking off grid in less than ideal conditions so uh I heard a guy one time say it the best way that I've ever put it, that I've ever heard it said anyway, it was, uh, if there is an emergency and, and you found yourself on your own, think about what you would be doing the day after the emergency and start doing it today, <clears throat> which is what I'm going to do, which is what I try to keep practiced up on anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do, since the potatoes are going to take longer than the pork chops to cook, is I'm going to get a fire going here in my stove tech. I've got some dried grass and a couple of twigs in there. Just take a match and get her going. And I guess I could get it going with, you know, uh, an alternate source of uh, fire starting. Uh, magnesium sticks or stuff like that. But I like matches. So, there we go. We got the fire going there. It's going to take off in the stove tech. And I'll get me a good fire going. And once I get ready to uh, start cooking the taters, then I'll uh, get back with you. Alrighty. Well, my first attempt failed. I had to go and pick some more, uh, some more weeds. Uh, and some dry grasses. Stuff that was up, you know, trying to find stuff like this that's up off the ground. This, uh, try it again. Take some of this stuff and stuff it down in here. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you all that this is easy because it is not. Uh, this is why I'm doing this video to try to get you all to, to see that you do need to get out and get some practice at some of this stuff in order to be successful at it when the time comes and you, you know, really need to know how to do it. Because like Lobuck says, if you've never done it, then you don't really know how to do it. Take some more of these dry stuff and just put them in here. Get my match. Hopefully some of this fluffy stuff will some of this fluffy stuff will catch, I hope, and uh, see if we can't get this dinner going here. side now if I don't use whatever I don't use out of this bundle then I'll put them in the shed or in the house to keep them dry so in the meantime I'm going to start breaking some of this stuff here up maybe get my knife baton a little bit of really small pieces here and uh, try to get this fire going some of these thicker stalks on some of these may work good too so We'll get the fire going. This is a little damp. We'll get the fire going and then we'll take it to the next step. But I wanted to show you all that not every time is a success. You're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to practice at it a little bit. It's, uh, it's not easy, but it can be done uh, when the time comes. So I'll get back with you here in a minute. Alrighty. 
I got a decent fire going in there, but I'm really having to baby it. So now what I'm going to do is uh, this this stove tech came with a pot skirt. I'm going to put the pot skirt on. Now I'm going to set my pot of taters right down on top of that and let it start boiling. And like I say, I'm this damp wood. Uh, I'm really having to baby it and uh, keep air flowing real good through it. But uh, you know, it is what it is, and we will we'll get it done. It may take a little bit longer time and a little bit more work, but you know we're going to eat good. So uh, I'll be back with you here in a little bit. All righty, we got the stove tech rocking. The pot is getting really warm to the touch. The water taters are looking good. It's starting to steam. So now we're going to go ahead and light the fire pit. Bear with me here. Get the fire going here so we can uh, start getting the uh, the pork chops cooking. That's what we're going to cook tonight is some pork chops. So obviously you've got I've got dry grass and some some tinder and kindling and stuff already on here. Let's see if we can get this thing going. This one here kind of worries me a little more. I'm afraid that once this dry grass burns up that it may not it may not uh, burn like I want it to burn since it's so damp and chilly outside but it's going to take some work to keep this fire going and but we'll do it now once it gets warmed up then I'll take my uh, my grates here and put them on now if you were out and about on your own uh, you could just get a couple of rocks and heat up the rocks and just cook right on top of the rocks. There's lots of uh, you know survival cooking uh, out there if you're in the wilderness. But right now this is uh, more of a you know you're you're homesteading. You uh, you're at your bug out location. You're on your own, and uh, you know your family's hungry and you're cooking dinner. Completely off the grid. So anyway, that's going to get rip roaring for a little bit. I'm going to tend to it and get some good coals and some uh, some good wood burning. And uh, I'll get back with you here directly. Well, just as I suspected, it's uh, getting pretty difficult to keep this fire going once the, uh, the grass burned up. I do have a starting to get a good little pile of coals. But the best way that I've found to deal with this is small pieces of dry wood. And the best way to get those is to baton it out of bigger pieces of wood. And what I mean by batoning is, you see I've got that plank right there. And I've got an older, bigger knife that was an old uh, tanto blade of some sort and then just another stick. And what I do is I take a big, a bigger piece like this and I stand it up and put my old, you don't want to use your good knives for this, please. And then hit it with the stick and that will split, <clears throat> split smaller pieces out that you can use that are going to be dry because the middle of the wood is dry. So, and I put mine on this old piece of board here, that way I, uh, even though this is not one of my, you know, one of my greatest knives, it's just an old, old one that I got at a yard sale years and years ago, it does pretty good at doing this. So, this is what I do, just get these, and uh, I think it's called baton, and this will get you to get some, some of these smaller pieces of drier wood out of these bigger pieces of wood that you can throw onto the fire and they'll burn quick and hot. Burn them up quick and hot to get a good pile of coals going so you can start using the uh, the bigger stuff. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you on uh, batoning, even though we're not out in the woods. We have a wood pile here that's been split. Just get some of the, the split wood that you have split in your wood pile already. And baton you out some uh, some smaller pieces that'll that'll burn good. So you need to quit blabbing. Get after the fire. I'll get back with you. Alrighty, we got the potatoes are boiling up nicely here. I don't know if I can get this in the camera or not. And it won't be very long before they're done. I've got my. 
a uh, little pan, a little pot full of corn right here. I'm rotating it around, sitting next to the fire, just kind of warming it up slow. I got my fire spread out pretty good in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my my cooking grates across the top there. Let those start heating up. Sorry about all the smoke, but that's what happens when you cook on a fire. Let those start heating up. Uh, keep tending my fire. Now, and also another thing too is that this this ground is wet. It's it's been raining off and on. And it's chilly, so the ground is cold and wet. So that fire is just sucking moisture up out of the ground. And uh, all you can do is all you can do. Just keep nursing your fire and keep it going and get your good coals built up so that you can cook. I mean, I am 100% sure that each and everybody out there could do this. Uh, cook, just keep your fire going and keep tending it. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer. But it really does feel good when you have said, you know what, I cook dinner on a fire in the rain. It, uh, it feels good. So I'm going to set the camera back inside for a little bit so that it doesn't get wet because I'm pretty sure that electronics and water equals bad things. <laughs> but I wanted to give you a quick update. So, And that piece of tin back there, by the way, is the cover that I used to put over this when I'm not cooking. So if you're, anybody was wondering, that's what it was. Alrighty, I got me some wood there, batoned up, and uh, ready to keep nursing the fire. And I will uh, get back with you all here in a little bit. Alrighty, fire looks good. So let's get our pork chops and put them on there and start cooking. This is just one of those cheap packs of assorted chops that you get at whatever mark you have available to you. And what I'll do also is whenever I'm done, I'll turn this, I'll just flip this tin foil around. And use the other side. Use the other side of it for the cook meat. That way you're not wasting anything. And uh, there we go. Man, these are going to be good. I love stuff that's cooked over an open fire. Gets that smoke flavor and the, 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 the flames licking on it. And, mm, good, good stuff, y'all. And I moved my corn up there too, so I can start catching some more heat. Because it was frozen corn that was going to be uh, bound for the dehydrator, but I decided we're going to cook it tonight. So, all right, you guys, I'll catch back up here in a minute with you. Alrighty, our Stove Tech mashed potatoes are ready. They are good and soft, ready to be taken into the house there and uh, and mashed up. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you that. I think hopefully everybody knows to uh, put milk and butter and mash up the potatoes and a little salt and pepper and there you go. Here's our pork chops. Now I do want to tell you that there are going to be a lot of hot spots. So you want to make sure that you're always checking your meat. And I flip mine constantly just to make sure that if it's on a really hot spot that it's not going to get burned up. Burned up meat is not tasty meat it is crappy meat my opinion so we've got a few more minutes of cooking we'll get out some old barbecue sauce sauce them up and I'll show you when we do that alrighty the taters are done now we move the corn over onto the top of the stove tech and that won't take it very long at all I went ahead and dabbed some of the uh, some barbecue sauce onto the chops here. Let's try to get this camera set up. Take my little brush and just uh, smooth it around. Get it good and covered up. Man, alive, y'all! This is going to be good. Barbecuing, gotta love it. And if you've never cooked over an open fire before, I would really really recommend it because you get all the smoky flavor from the wood that you're using. I mean don't use you know like <laughs> painted drywall wood or painted uh, you know stuff that you tore out of your house to cook on. I wouldn't think that would be very healthy for you. But you get some good hardwoods. I'm using oak 
We've got quite a bit of oak around here and it's plentiful, so that's what I'm using. That's what I usually use to cook on. It burns hot and uh, you can usually find some, some dry stuff if you baton it into the middle there. These are almost done. So we're going to give them a flip here real quick. Sauce the other side and I'll get right back with you. Alright y'all, sorry if it's getting too dark to see. Pork chops are done. I'm going to start pulling them off of the grill here. Come on, open up, there we go. And they do look very good. So, there you have it guys. I just wanted to show y'all. This is uh, a little bit of on your own cooking. Uh, a little bit of on your own cooking and uh, the way that I use my my stove tech I don't use it as a primary I use it as a uh, as a side burner and uh, the corn is just about done still going good this thing has never let me down and uh, I hope you all enjoyed a little bit of on your own in the winter time on a crappy rainy day cooking outside over fire so all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. God bless in the end. Buzz, buzz, the end.